Good afternoon. It's Sunday afternoon here and I've just finished up flying and finally getting around to doing a video on the Chieftain. Uh, it's the machine that people message me the most when you video on, but I've never got around to it yet. But today is the day. This aeroplane is very special to me actually. Uh, I still think, uh, subject to actually adding it up in the last few years, uh, this aeroplane uh, is the uh, the regio that I've got the most most hours in, and also the type that I've got the most hours on. Uh, this particular one is a 1974 model, and this was our very first charter machine we had back in uh, about eight years ago or so. This was the, uh, the very first one we had. We initially leased it, and uh, then we ended up buying it. Since then, we've done a fair few changes to it, a fair few upgrades, and uh, and turned it into the, uh, the machine it is today. Let's have a look around it. So this one's a 1974 model. And a Chieftain is, by, uh, by correct definition, is a Navajo Chieftain. So they originally built the Navajo, which was one frame shorter and one window shorter. And, uh, and then they decided to build a bit bigger one and they called it the Navajo Chieftain. So the Navajo had 310 horsepower engines and the Chieftain's got 350s aside. So for my pre-flight on the Chieftain, uh, much like any other aeroplane, I start at one spot and work my way around to the same spot again. Uh, but looking up into the, into the wheel wells there, making sure it's all nicely greased. And we know that by we get grease all over us. Checking that the gear doors are not flapping around. I would take the pedo cover off, except I'm not actually going flying in it. I'm going home into the uh, the wheel well, and you can actually drop these gear doors easy enough by putting the gear handle down from its neutral position and uh, pumping down with the emergency extension handle. But we won't bother on that today. Checking again, everything's nicely greased. Checking these things will actually move. Oh, look at that. There's Count Tractula sitting there. We'll get to him another day. Looking up under the cows. Or under the cow flaps. Um, cow flaps are electric, electrically driven. We'll get a better look at the turbo through the side doors. But just checking that there's nothing dribbling out. Quite a low time engine this one. Opening a little door. And in there. We have a big old turbo and a big old engine. So TLEO, which is turboed, injected opposed, 540-J2BD. And the other side is an L TLEO, 540-J2BD. And the L being for left-hand turning, not left-hand side, it's actually on the right-hand side. Three-bladed props, this side. general condition inspection in this side and got our big oil cooler there looking down through the cow flaps new exhaust on this one that one there and one of the catches on chieftains is checking the oil so both engines have the exact same dipstick which has a calibration on it out here for left engine and right engine, which you can kind of sort of just see the engraving there for the right engine. And then the other side is the side we're on, which is the left engine. And you'll see there that this one is sitting at just shy of 12. But if we turn it around, the calibration left and right is, uh, is slightly different. So what can happen is if you're reading the wrong side of the dipstick, depending on which side round you're, uh, you're actually reading, you can either have too much oil and think you've got just right, or you can have too little oil and think you've got just right. Uh, and the latter being the least desirable scenario. Yeah, main tanks and in a chieftain, because the tank is quite so deep, you, um, you can't always see much fuel in there if it's anything below about three quarters. Which, um, which means that we have to be very strict on our, our fuel calculations and uh, 
knowing what we should have in the tank and then calibrating that against what we put in from the Bowser and from what the fuel gauges say. Out here, the outboard tank is the ox tank and exactly the same on the other side. So two inboards are the mains, two outboards are the oxes. Uh, fairly straightforward fuel system really compared to the 310. There's a good video for us, 310 fuel system. That'll be excellent fun. Check the name on this engine. So in here, this is this is something exciting to look at. We've uh, we've got ourselves here a magnetic alternate air door, or an ice door as the manual calls it, and it's got a magnetic catch and spring loaded there. But the idea being that if our air intake, which is just in front of there, blocked up with ice or anything else for that matter, the suction this door to pop open like that and allow uh, unfiltered but at least unobstructed air to go in into the big old turbo. Bit of a trick to double check uh, elevator trim in Chieftains so I always reset it to take off after I've landed and I find that if you push it all the way up to full deflection of the elevator that's where the trim tab will sit flush so then level it's got that, uh, that little bit of, of, uh, of what you would call back trim, I suppose, which is elevator trim tab down. And then when it's at full deflection sitting under the weight of gravity, it looks about like that. Um, but at least that way you can calibrate in your mind once you start it up, what the trim indicators are doing. Make sure that they're showing the same thing as what the trim really is. Also on trims, I always make sure that the rudder trim is somewhat neutral, you know, particularly if it's been doing training or it's come out of maintenance or something like that. I want to make sure that no one's accidentally left the trim full deflection on us. So I do that as part of my walk around. So a Navajo and the earlier Chieftains didn't have a crew door there, which this one still doesn't think a 74. However, our other one, we've got two of these, is a 74 as well, and it does have the crew door. So at some stage that's been modified and added in because there isn't a lot available to do it. Uh, but this one, not having the crew door, means we have to access it via the rear stairs. Pop that open up like that, and in we go. So, walking forward, we then step over the spar like that, and we arrive in the cockpit. So, this one's been retrofitted with the G600 TXI touchscreen. Uh, it's got a GTN 650, 750, and uh, the uh, standby instruments over for the co-pilot are all the originals, and as well as the standbys for the pilot there. Got some overhead switches, that's cool. Uh, these are now inoperative, the fuel gauge is there because they're, um, they're now on the G600, uh, but that's where they originally were. So uh, originally you would select mains and the main tanks will be shown on the on the gauges or if you'd select outboard to ox and ox that's where uh, the, what the gauges would show and to get between mains and ox got to go past off there now uh, this here is our cross feed which basically pull that up and turn it and uh, makes it a bit of a free-for-all and uh, you then can feed the uh, opposite engines uh, opposite engine from the uh, from a tank these are the firewall shut off so pull these and then that shuts fuel flows to the engine at the firewall put those back on before we forget if you've got those popped open and you've got a battery master switch on you'll see that light come on to tell you that one of them is one or both are turned off uh, we've got the cow flap gauges, which at the moment show up even though they're down. That's because they're actually powered to a position once you've got some battery power on. And these are the switches that drive our cow flaps either open or shut. Uh, you can see that our trim indicators, much like the cow flap indicators, are just showing full deflection until we get some battery power. So, on that note, let's turn some battery power on. How exciting. Gear is down and see how all the indicators flick to their happy spots where they're meant to be. And, uh, and we can drive our cow flaps like that. You may or may not be able to hear that, that gear motor. Turn that battery master off again, save some battery power. Uh, so, I'll spin up one of the engines for you just to show you 
starting one of these big engines. They're, they're really lovely to start when they're cold. Hot uh, is another matter, but fortunately for my embarrassment purposes, uh, I don't have to show you one of those because it's cold. So we'll go everything up. And once again, making sure the gear is down, all those circuit breakers are in, and you'll see these fuel boost pumps. We leave those pulled because uh, until we get the engines running, if we had those in, we just flood it before start. We go the battery master on. Oh, on a side note, there's our uh, alternator switches, left and right down there. And back in the day, they used to have the fail lights just in front of them. And when you're flying along, your left knee goes about there, which means you can't, uh, can't see them. Um, the fail lights now are on the G600, and we've also shifted the vac pump fail lights and the fuel boost in op lights to there, so they're all, all in the one spot. Because uh, I have had a dual alternator failure in a Chieftain, and uh, this Chieftain actually, and uh, the memories. And uh, I didn't know about it because my knee was against those, so I didn't see that either of the lights had come on. And the first thing I knew about it was when the radio stack started turning off uh, through lack of, lack of electrons in the battery. Okay, so that on. We go up to our mags. And force of habit will go both on. And we're going to give it a buzz on the, uh, on the boost pump. Now, normally up to about six gallons per hour, uh, except because the G600 is still spooling up, you can do it by ear. And you'll hear as the pump starts to load up, and that's the right amount. Here, there, it loaded up. Pump off. And we've just got our screen alive now. Oh, look, you can choose your own profile. How exciting is that? Ah, oh, we miss Ollie. Let's, let's be Ollie's profile today. Continue. We'd set all that stuff up another time. Park brakes on. So, throttle back. Cracked slightly open. Next, just to cut off. And then what I'm going to do is up here, I'm about to press the rocker button for the starter to the right there. And as it fires, I'm going to push the mixture up to uh, towards about three quarters towards uh, full rich. So we are clear on the right, and away we go. Missed it, so we'll go again. Bear with me. There we go. Half the start, sit it there about thousand rpm or so and we can see the fuel pressure is sitting in the green oil pressure is right up there but it'll start to drop down a little bit as the oil thins out and now we can turn on that boost pump and i'll show the screen as i do it and you see a slight pickup in the fuel pressure and those pumps now stay on for the entire flight they just uh, provide a, a, a bit of a bit of an assistance to the engine driven pump whereas the high boost pumps up here go fairly berserk once we turn those on and it'll just about flood the engine so see that and see the rpm drop off i'll turn that pump back off again okay we'll uh, shut it down we'll do a brief mag check happy happy Mags off, pump, and pull, and get your master off. You can see by my sweatiness that a crew door is a very nice addition to a chieftain. Uh, you can sit there with your, uh, your elbow out the window, looking pretty tough and that sort of thing. Uh, whereas if you haven't got a crew door, you've just got to have the windows open as best you can. And uh, once you shut down, you start warming up quite significantly. So we'll head down the back and get out of this aeroplane, lock it all up. Uh, I hope that uh, I hope that you all enjoyed the walk around of a Chieftain and uh, found it somewhat interesting. Uh, one of my favourite aeroplanes. So, but uh, a lot of good memories of this aeroplane. Don't fly it as much as I used to, but uh, I am getting in it tomorrow morning, which is very exciting. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.